Hello everyone and welcome to the first game that ended in round 4, it's Jordan Van Forest versus Magnus Carlsen uh, in round 4 of the Tata Steel Chess Tournament 2021 and uh, I decided to show it right away uh, since uh, it, it finished rather quickly. Uh, so Van Forest with the white pieces opens with e4 and as the title suggests let's see let's see how he does this. We have e5 by Magnus, knight f3 and knight to c6 with bishop to b5 uh, going for the Ruy Lopez and now we don't see the Berlin defense but rather a6, Morphe's defense with bishop to a4, knight to f6, and now uh, white just castles with b5 and bishop to b3. So this is all very standard stuff. Uh, we see this very often, bishop to b7 uh, going for the Archangelsk variation, and d3 uh, by Van Forest with bishop to e7 and knight to c3. We have castles and now a3, uh, all been seen before. We have knight to d4. Uh, now offering a, a trade of knights, also attacking the bishop here, and this is the this is the first moment where Van Forest. Uh shows that uh, he, he came very much prepared for this game because uh, Magnus already had this position uh, against Fabiano Corwana in the 2016 Grand Chess Tour Rapid Tournament in Paris uh, and he defeated Fabiano Corwana. Corwana went bishop to a2 and Magnus uh, won that game. However, here we have a trade on d4, captures, captures and now uh, knight to e2 also. Uh, interestingly, in that same tournament in the 2016 Grand Chester Paris tournament, uh, Magnus also had this position with the black pieces against Maxim Bashiela Grav, who went knight to d5, and that game ended very, very quickly. Magnus uh, defeated MVL, I think, in some 26 moves. So here, knight to e2, again, showing a different preparation, and Magnus, uh, as the d4 pawn is under attack, defends it with c5. And here, uh, there are some games where knight to g3 was played, also c3 is a known move, but here we have bishop to g5 and this is now a, uh, a new move in the position so already as of move 12 we have a completely new game and here magnus replied with the d5 now i was very interested uh, in how strong the reply is and uh, i let uh, the engine crunch the position here for some uh, 15 minutes and it got to to the depth of 36 and it says that d5 is indeed the absolute best move and that it should give black a slight advantage. So let's see what happens here. This is what uh, Van Forest prepared as uh, chances are he, he of course uh, also looked into the d5 move. Uh, bishop captures on f6, bishop captures and now bishop captures on d5. So trading everything off, bishop captures, e captures and the queen captures. So now what we have here is that the position is very very similar. There's only the e file that is open on the Board. It's bishop against knight and uh, seven pawns each. Four pawns each on the queen side, three pawns each on the king side. We have knight to g3 and now c4. Magnus continues pushing. Uh, we have rook to e1, uh, putting a rook on a nice open file, and rook 8 to e8. When, uh, Carlsen does the same. Uh, we have a4 now, uh, trying to uh, create some weaknesses in Carlsen's pawn structure, and Magnus trades once. So rook captures on e1. Queen captures on e1 and c captures on d3. c captures on d3 and now b captures on a4. And now we have queen to d1. Not, not capturing right away. If you capture right away, then Magnus get, could get some queen b5 action going on here, attacking uh, a lot of targets. So instead, after b captures on a4, we have queen to d1, now with a double attack on the pawn here, also keeping an eye on the d3 pawn. Queen to b5 by Magnus and now comes knight to e4. Uh, so what do you do here? Bishop to e7. If you go for the b2 pawn, queen captures on b2 and be all greedy about it, then uh, you're gonna allow white to open up your king side, uh, rook captures on a4, and it's gonna be, uh, it, it's still probably a, a drawn endgame, uh, but uh, you know, you, you don't want to shatter your uh, king's defenses like this. So here, after knight to e4, bishop back to e7 by Magnus, and now queen to c2. Uh, we have rook to b8 going after that b2 pawn and of course now uh, white goes for the trade rook captures magnus trades queens captures captures and captures and now uh, of course you do not want to grab the a6 pawn right away you're getting checkmated so van forest needs to make some breeding room for the king he goes for g4 and now uh, rook to b6 magnus defends this pawn and gives up the, the d4 pawn uh, the past a6 pawn is much more important as it's also an outside pass pawn so rook captures on d4 and 
and now king to f8, bringing the king into the game, rook to d7, and now rook to g6, going after the g-pawn here. Uh, there's no point defending it because it's just f5, so it doesn't really make sense. So here, king to f1, and rook captures on g4. But now, uh, Van Forest gets uh, his rook behind the pass pawn, so rook to a7, uh, and now Magnus goes for f5. So f5, and now knight to g3, saying, okay, uh, I'm going to grab this pawn, and Magnus decides to defend it to g6, uh, and uh, of course, rook captures on a6. So now it's three pawns each, but Magnus will still be able to win the d3 pawn. Rook to h4, king to g2, defending the pawn, and now rook to d4. <laughs> Not that, uh, rook to d4. If you went rook to d4 right away while the king was on f1, then the king just defends it. So here, knight e2, attacking the rook, and rook captures on d3. And we've traded down into this uh, uh, very simplified endgame where Carlsen has three pawns and Van Forest has two pawns, uh, all of them on the king's side. So let's see if Carlsen can push for, for more than a draw here. Knight to g1, uh, we have rook to d7. Uh, we have knight to f3 and now king to g7. Magnus now needs to find some sort of a way how to advance with his king and push his pawns. h3 and bishop to f6 now. We have king to g3 and rook to b7 now. King to g2 and rook to e7. Uh, we have rook to a5 and now rook to c7. So just uh, uh, reaching move 40, obviously getting, getting time control, gaining more time. Rook to d5 and now rook to a7. We have rook to b5 and now bishop to e7. Uh, knight to d4 and now uh, rook to d7. Attacking the knight. Uh, knight back to f3. You don't really gain anything by delivering this check, so it'd be pointless. Knight f3 and now rook to d6. Uh, we have rook to b7 attacking the bishop here and now king to f6. So slowly but surely uh, improving the position of the black king. Uh, rook to a7 and now h6 and here knight to h4 trying to uh, trick Magnus if Magnus goes for example for g5 then you just pick up the pawn because the bishop is hanging here captures and captures and now it's a dead draw so after knight h4 we have bishop back to d8 by Magnus defending his bishop uh, but now rook to h7 going after the pawn going after this pawn and here Magnus needs to decide what to do here does he want to uh, keep the game going with king to g5 uh, which then goes into knight to f3 check and king h5 all of his pawns are still protected and maybe he can still continue pushing or go for the very tricky rook to d2 but now although this looks like uh like a very tricky idea you could maybe uh, go for that f2 pawn uh, it actually doesn't work uh, for magnus because here uh, rook captures on h6 allowing king to g7 so attacking both of the both of the pieces not that one uh, both knight and the rook here we've reached the position from the thumbnail but now uh, it doesn't really matter because Van Forest has rook captures on g6 king h7 and now knight to f3 uh, freeing that knight and now the rook is under attack so that's why that's why rook to d2 was uh, in fact a, a dead draw and the other line still offered some play uh, but uh, in the end with, with, with perfect play, play of course would not be enough for a win so here Magnus grabs the pawn rook captures on f2 he doesn't want to give up uh, uh, the trade for nothing uh, king captures king captures and now king to g2 so a two piece uh, one piece each one pawn each uh sorry not king g3 king g2 was played king to h5 and now knight to d4 going after the pawn we have f4 and now again going after the pawn and the bishop so magnus needs to defend this bishop to g5 and now knight captures on g5 king captures and king to f3 now and we reach this uh, king and pawn endgame that is of course uh, a dead draw king h4 that's not an h4 king h4 and now captures captures and uh, it was in this position that uh, the players reached a draw by insufficient material so there you have it a very very simple tutorial on how to play against magnus carlsen if you ever face him so just uh, know all of the games that he played like one for us did here uh, prepare a novelty for him so he has to uh, figure out what's happening over the board and of course uh, play a perfect game make no mistakes and even though black was uh, black was better for the entire game by just a little bit 
split, uh, it was never enough to push for something more than an advantage. So a very useful opening if you need if you need a draw, and uh, of course uh, whenever you play Magnus, a, a draw is more than enough. So uh, a great victory for for Van Forest here, uh, snatching half a point from the world champion, and uh, Magnus still continues his drawing streak uh, after winning that uh, brilliant game against Alireza in round one. Uh, then he uh, then uh, three three draws, uh, but everyone plays very careful against him uh, because you know that even giving him just a little bit a little bit of room to breathe, uh, Magnus will go for that uh, full point. So uh, Van Forest did not allow it in this game, and he was able to to, to get a very nice draw here. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's the game. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, now you know how to play against uh, Magnus if you ever face him. Uh, I would like to thank DV Dynamo, uh, Ciaran Farah, uh, Louis Madison, uh, Omar Dasser, and Ryan Urban for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon. Uh, continuing the coverage of the Tata, still checking up on your wonderful suggestions and whatever else happens in the chess world. So uh, thank you all. I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day.